and your people or your team has determined that this is too hard for the Ford DNA. Exactly. That's a good way to describe it. For the Ford DNA. We're not suggesting that it's an uncomfortable seed or it's too firm or too soft. It is just different than how we want to position the blue oval. So a couple things we'll highlight here. You'll note that the bottom of the seat back is much wider than some of the seats we just showed. And, and Mike just made a good point. As, as you sit in that seat, it's definitely firmer than what we're trying to, or where we're trying to position our blue oval. You'll also notice that it's uh, uh, flat in the center section there. That uh, with our concavity, that what uh, accommodates the smaller occupants as well as the larger occupants. This, if you're a small occupant, you'll feel like you're loose in there. If you're a large occupant, you'll feel like the sides are too tight. Which c takes us back to uh, the point that you made before. Just because something is not uncomfortable, that doesn't mean it's comfortable. Right, there's a difference in, in, in definition as you read across the literature. Um, some people have defined comfort as the absence of discomfort. We joked around about that, about that a little bit earlier. But um, at Ford, that, that's almost like eliminating the error state. It's the quality side of it. What we're trying to do is move to more of the appeal side of it or the, uh, the wow side of it. So comfort and attributes, the other attributes that Larry's responsible for. Collectively, we think that gets us, you know, we'll continue to leverage the quality gains we've made that are well documented in the press, but we're getting into the appeal and the wow side of it now with what we're doing on the seat comfort side of it and the other attributes as well. And we're looking for questions and comments we on Ustream. What have we got? We have two. The first is just like pillows and mattresses have to be replaced, do vehicle seats also have a limited life and how long? Uh, You'd be surprised. Uh, the materials we use, especially on the foam side, we, we go to great lengths to spec the density of the foam uh, such that they have a long lifespan, longer for sure than your mattresses, even though you might you sit in those cars a long time depending on your commute. So we, go, we, do, we do a lot of research on durability as well, and uh, if we spec the thing right, and uh, we've, we're getting smarter and smarter every day, we think these seats will last a long time. Long there's time. A of, there's a lot of physical testing that goes into validating that the durability will actually be there, right? So at the vehicle level, as well as at the seat level. So, what is a long time? You, you want to? Our durability cycle for the full vehicle simulates uh, 10 years uh, um, of vehicle use. Okay. Uh, another another question? Yes. Do you design the seats in the back of vehicles for adult comfort or more for properly fitting a child's car seat? Sure. We're, we're looking at a lot of, uh, we call it, do they still call these bucket seats? Yeah. They, they, okay. can call them bucket. they call it bucket seats, which is pretty much the standard now in the front. In the back, they're called bench seats. Uh, what's seat. the difference? In there? sedans, they are called bench seats typically, but we do offer 40% um, seats that are more bucket like in some of our utility and crossover vehicles. Um, but to answer the question more directly, um, we want to deliver both. We, we don't want to compromise the adult occupant that sits back there. Uh, but at the same time, we're real sensitive and, and conscious to you know, being able to comfortably accommodate the child seat and the child more generally. Let's go over here uh, and look at uh, this example. Yeah, this is something I've always wanted to know. What is a lumbar? We hear that term lumbar. And I guess maybe because I haven't had any back problems yet, I. I Willie have been, you know, oblivious to uh, what is it. But you guys, that's a big deal for you. Right. We, we live that every day. Um, so lumbar is, is really two things. To the, to the customer, to you, it's this part of your spine. It's the lower part of your spine. That's the lumbar spine. Right. Right. Point right here. Pro pro oh, okay. This is the sacrum. From the sacrum up till approximately here is your lumbar spine. So over the course of a long drive, you might notice that you're getting fatigued in that particular region. So to the customer, lumbar is, is this, and it's anatomical and it's related to the body, and that's actually the right definition. When we talk about lumbar in, in the seat world, we talk about a mechanism that you might find in a seat. So this is the structure uh, that we use in many of our seats today here in North America, and this is uh, the lumbar mechanism. So to combat some of that fatigue we just described, uh, there's a switch on the side of the seat that would enable you either electrically or manually to move this lumbar mechanism in and out to offer or to provide the type of support to your lumbar spine that you might need, again, to combat that fatigue. Is this something new that's just evolved or has this been around for a long, long time and I've just never had one on my vehicle? You've probably just never had one, Mike. Okay. They've, they've been around forever. Okay. 
they've been around for a long time and, and they're more and more common and they're becoming more and more common in all kinds of different segments you know years ago it maybe was more prevalent in some of the more premium segments but now it's starting to make its way down into the the c car size vehicles even yeah, and uh, we, we study, obviously, where the competition's going on, what the features of their seats, and uh, make sure that we're fully competitive. Uh, we're starting to see uh, lumbars that move up and down, as well as fore and aft. Um, and uh, we make sure all the time that uh, we're on top of our game and we're delivering the right features to the customer. Now, Mike Kolich uh, has been very involved in Sea Comfort for a long, long time. And I asked him when we walked in here a couple of hours ago, What's the most, show me the com most comfort, comfort you've got. Lay it on me. Give me the mother of comfort on Ford Comfort DNA. And that's in the next room. That's the in the next room. Let's go over. Follow us over here. This, by the way, is a, what is it? This isn't the seat I'm talking about, but this is. This is, a, this is the Lincoln MKT. We've shown this at uh, some of the auto shows. And, uh, this is a Lincoln, so how we differentiate Lincoln, it's still the same tenants. You'll, you'll notice that there's a little bit of concavity. There's the, the tighter lower insert and the taller bolsters to support the pelvis. On the cushion, we've got the same sort of phenomena going on. Lower, lower bolsters in the, in the rear, lower bolsters at the front, the peak being in the mid-thigh region. Again, that's to support uh, the pelvis properly and to allow for pedal, proper pedal operation. How we differentiate the Lincolns is in the, in the, is in the materials. So the question earlier about fabrics, this, this has a more premium or higher grade material, a higher grade leather than we would use on the Ford. But the tenants from a DNA perspective, they're real similar. We think, again, we want to accommodate, if it's a Ford or a Lincoln, we want to accommodate as many people as we can. So those things we described, the concavity, the shape of the seat, the firmness of the seat, those things uh, aren't unique to a Ford or a Lincoln customer. Those are just basics that you need to support the oxen comfortably. Let's walk in here and uh, show them uh, the seat that you thought was really the, the Ford uh, comfort daddy. Uh, and as we do, this, you also talked about cruise comfort and showroom comfort. What is that? I would also add to that dynamic comfort. Okay. It's, it's how we, uh, th th that's the language we use internal to Ford globally mm -hmm. to uh, describe comfort. So, so showroom comfort is when you first walk into a dealership. You wanna probably, you, you'll wanna touch the seat you might walk up to it and touch it. And then when you sit in it, without even driving, uh, you'll have a sensation regarding comfort. And that is what we call showroom comfort. So that's an important characteristic. It keeps people in the showroom. If you're not happy at that point, you're probably not likely to take it for a test drive, and then you're probably also not likely to buy it. So that showroom comfort is critical to us. Then the cruise is once you're actually driving. So cruise, think of, uh, think of North America and how we drive here. We've got uh, interstates, long stretches of, of straight highway. So we drive more kind of straight line. We get to the end of a road and then we want to turn right and then we'll drive in a straight line again. Uh, whereas, you know, contrast that now with, with what we've got in Europe and in some of the other regions around the world. It's much more windy. It's much more, um, lateral support is more of a premium. So Vibration is important too. Does that go into I mean, Vibration? cruise control? Vibration is critical. We consider that in fact an error state. We've got ways to actually measure how much vibration gets up th through the floor and up through the seat and into the occupant. We want to minimize as much of that as possible. So this is the seat you thought was the most comfortable. We're looking for uh, questions or comments about Ford Comfort DNA. And this is, I don't want to fall <laughs> backwards. It's not really hooked to anything, but this is a... This is the, the Ford F-150 that is on the road today. This is, you know, the culmination of, of years worth of research and we, we've been successful in incorporating many of those principles that we've described for the last several minutes here okay. into this seat.